All right. Um, yeah, let's do a walkthrough of Tela. Tela is our very first plugin. It's a modal synthesizer um, in CLAP and AUV2 format. It's uh, Mac only. And uh, yeah, let's just dig in. Um, first, I wanted to talk a little bit about what modal synthesis is so that you can get a better understanding of what's like going on and how the type of synthesis works because it is a bit of a special type of synthesis. It's it's uh, very unconventional in a lot of ways, but it's very cool once you start to mess around with it. So uh, first of all, I want to open up my trusty Max. Um, and uh, I have this little demo set up of, uh, of sort of the basis of modal synthesis. So modal synthesis sort of in the family of additive synthesis and physical modeling, uh, those two kind of areas. And uh, where it sort of bases its sound generation in is um, having multiple bandpass filters that you sort of actuate, you like hit them and they ring out and that kind of creates your sound. Those are your oscillators. And when they stack up, they create one big single sound. And uh, usually you refer to those individual oscillators as partials. So the partials, or harmonics you could say, kind of make up a larger sound. So in this patch, I have four bandpass filters. Super simple. Um, and I mean, just to get like a notion of what a bandpass filter is, we could just play um, this absolute classic of a sample um, through um, my filters. Um, so, um, so it picks out sort of a center frequency and it has like a little bit of a fall off. So it's kind of like a little peak. And if I increase the Q value or the damp or the resonance, um, that peak will be more dramatic. So instead of filtering incoming sounds or instead of like applying it as an effect, we can sort of use these this peaking, this resonant behavior to create um, a, um, a partial that reacts to input and rings out, sort of like striking a real world material or um, things along those lines. So if I instead send like an impulse into the bandpass filter, I get a little click when I have a low resonance and as I uh, increase the resonant amount, I start hearing kind of a tone. And as you can see on the scope here, this is essentially a sine wave. And if I add multiple bandpass filters together, I have four here, so these are the amplitudes, I get a sort of a more complex spectra, waveform, something like that. And when I start to detune them, I get more like inharmonic tones or bell-like stuff. So even with these few amount of partials and, and amplitudes and stuff, it's quite fun. It's quite a nice uh, synth, synth ty synthesis type to play around with. It's very like natural sounding, but in a very, it's, it's like very uncanny valley. Uh, it can get these kind of strange overtones and, and face facing things. And it's, it's often used to like model real world sounds but with Tela, we wanted to really explore what modal synthesis is sort of in its core. Um, so we've sort of kind of just dug down into like modal synthesis itself and see what you can do with that. So here we have four filters in Tela. We have 128 per voice. So it gets a lot more complicated. Um, but of course, the interface isn't just turning... 120 knobs or 120 sliders, but it's more parameterized. Um, 
So um, let's dig in. Um, and I'm going to start from the start by uh, logging out of Tela. So um, the first time you add Tela to your track, um, you will be met with this login screen. Um, and you use the same account as on our website. So uh, I got this one. Um, and then it logs you in. Um, and um, that's about it for for initial for like loading the plugin. Um, if you don't have a license, it will ask you to start a trial. And the trial is seven days. Um, yeah, um, and you get up to four machines at once. You can you can activate. Um, but anyway, so the general layout of Tela is based around parameter pages. So. These icons down here each correspond to a different page filled with parameters that each pertain to like a more specific subsection of the synthesis engine. Um, and I'll just run them, run through them real quick. So we have patch, and this is sort of like the general voice stuff like pitch and glide and sort of like more how does the synth behave, um, more like settings-ish. Um, and then impulse. So impulse is an impulse generator. And uh, as I showed in the example, the demo patch and max, um, this is sort of the thing that we strike the filters with. So the impulse generator is used to, to ping the filters to get a response from them. And the default setting is um, sort of a, just a regular linear ramp. And this, this um, when you have everything kind of flat, turns into a uh, saw wave. Um, which is quite interesting. <laughs> Maybe not what you would expect from a bunch of filters. Um, and as you shape the impulse and kind of mess around with it, you can get really different results from all of the, the whole modal bank. So, um, um, then we have a grain generator, and this is essentially a noise generator where you, where you can adjust its density. Uh, the noise is sort of made up of, of smaller particles, and as they play really fast, they start to sound like white noise. And when they play slower, you start to hear sort of individual crackles. And this is really nice to sort of almost scrape the, the filter bank or, or sort of uh, um, have these like kind of more random triggerings and things like that. And we can listen to that just a little bit. And this is the more, um, of course, more brighter sound. And as you turn the density down, you kind of get these uh, crackles. There's more about that later. <laughs> and then we have tonality. The tonality page um, controls everything related to frequency in the modal bank. And um, this lets you sort of individually control all the partials with uh, these parametrizations. This lets you kind of bend and expand or contract the whole bank of frequencies. And you can get these very strange inharmonic sounds or bell-like tones or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and next up we have contour and this um, controls the amplitudes instead. So uh, sort of like the volume of each partial. And the most obvious parameter is just listening to reducing the amount. And as you see in the oscilloscope, this is very obviously doing, sort of like reducing the quality almost. Essentially kind of turning into an infinitely steep low pass filter because it's just like hard removing the partials, but with a nice fade out. Um, and lastly, we have space. And this is a reverb effect, um, which the like final voice goes into. Um, and each page has its own LFO, which you can route to any of these parameters. So I'm just going to go through each page and give kind of a rundown of the parameters. 
um, to get an idea of what they do and how they work and how they impact the sound. So patch, kind of boring. Uh, <laughs> just just uh, pitch stuff. Oops. Uh, you can transpose your sound. And uh, as you saw there, you can do you can double click on any parameter name to enter it manually. Um, and double click on a parameter to reset it to the sort of origin um, and hold down shift to get a finer control of it. Um, so pitch, just sort of a simple transposition. And this is of course really useful for doing like uh, pitch envelopes and stuff with LFO or modulation of that kind or getting your sound more into a specific register. Um, spread. So spread is sort of a random uh, spread of each voice where the more you increase it, the more each voice will be sort of randomly spread into the stereo field. And it's just like a nice effect sometimes to, to turn on. So it just kind of throws the voices around in the stereo field. Now glide is basically just portamento. But it's... Uh, Um, so it slides between the pitch of uh, one note to another. It works with polyphony, um, and if you go into mono mode, um, it will act in uh, sort of legato play. I'll cover that in a second. <laughs> um, so the retrig, um, this controls whether or not the filters will be reset on every time you trigger them. Um, I typically just leave this on um, unless I'm doing sounds that are more sort of like uh, going towards like a natural percussion vibe where you want like sort of like things that don't repeat that much. Um, and uh, when you turn it off, you kind of get like a more natural response. The, the filters get like an energy buildup from every hit. So if you uh, keep triggering really, really fast, you'll get like a sort of a bigger energy out of the filters. And they kind of mm, sound a little bit livelier uh, with certain types of sounds. Um, velocity controls how the velocity affects the synthesizer. And you can have it either control the amplitude, the level, um, so the sort of volume of the synth, or the damp factor, which is sort of uh, how much the filters are dampened, which, which we'll get into on the tonality page later. And you can have both, uh, either, or off. Um, and lastly, you can control how many voices um, you have at your disposal in the polyphony up to 16 um, and if we turn it all the way down it's in mono mode and uh, as I said this lets you do legato play um, so uh, then if I turn up glide um, if I just play staccato like uh, one two three without uh, letting go every time I play a note um, it won't glide, but when I sort of do overlapping notes, um, I get glide. So it's kind of like a more traditional mono synth in the way it's set up. All right, so that's sort of the, the patch page. Um, quite, uh, you know, quite boring, but uh, it's, it's great. Um, and uh, I should also cover these bottom parameters right now. So. On each page, we have these like bottom row of parameters. And these sort of are just parameters that are always kind of nice to have at hand. So we have the main um, sort of uh, uh, envelopes. We have the balance between the two input sources, impulse and grain. And lastly, the in, uh, output volume. And uh, a thing to think about with the uh, decay um, is that it's, I mean, the, the only real envelope in the synthesizer is, is the attack. Um, so this does an actual fade. The decay actually controls uh, the filter resonance. Um, if you again think about, um, you can bring up the max patch. Oh, closed it, but if we bring up the max patch again, um, um, the damp factor here is basically the resonance, which basically is the decay. They're, they're connected in a a nice way. So the more resonance we have, 
the longer it rings out. And this is what the decay parameter is doing. So this has kind of a really big effect on how different parameters sort of behave and, and how it responds to input and stuff like that. So some good to keep in mind. Um, but of course, we've sort of tuned it in a way where it, it feels more like a traditional decay control. Um, but it really isn't. Um, okay, so impulse. Um, as I said, this is the impulse generator. It generates like a, a uh, quick ramp or like a hit and uh, uh, sort of hits the filters and they ring out. And uh, when there's, when uh, it's in its sort of default stage, um, state, um, it has like a, just a linear ramp. Um, and when you hit the uh, filter bank like this, um, and they, it's all kind of like linear and response and stuff, you get this saw wave. Um, and as I change, so sh if I change stuff around, I'm gonna get like different results. And so shape um, controls, the shape of the impulse. So as I said, it goes from a linear ramp down to a more sort of like a sinusoidal waveform. So um, um, it kind of becomes a little softer and then almost more like a pluck. Just really useful to get like different tones. Uh, and it really comes more into play when you sort of balance between impulse and noise also. Um, blur is an effect that diffuses the um, impulse uh, output. So you can kind of make it sound a little softer up to almost, almost like a sort of like a reverb-ish effect. And tone is basically a low pass filter. Um, simple as that. Um, and when it gets really interesting is here on the bottom row where we have the repeat functionality. So this is basically a ratcheting generator. Um, so you can have the impulse repeat either depending on how long you hold down the sound or just kind of like more like an echo. Um, and it's actually, it's not actually re-triggering the synthesizer. So it's just repeating the impulse sound itself. So the whole synth is sort of still running, um, which is really interesting because you can get a lot of unexpected results from that and it's a bit more alive. So if I turn repeat up, um, I'll start hearing a couple of echoes. And it kind of sounds like an echo. Um, and uh, the reason why it sort of has this nice fall off right now is because we've enabled um, sort of tone control of the repeat. So um, the repeat by default fades out like towards the end of it, um, but you can also have it like turn down the sort of uh, low pass filter of the synth. So if I turn this button off, it's more like, um, it's just amplitude. Um, and if I press this note button here, uh, it will kind of repeat as long as I hold down the key and then it kind of reverses the whole um, whole trajectory. So it's like a build up. Um, and we can also, so speed here, of course, controls the speed of the repeats and uh, we can sync that to, to the tempo of the DAW by pressing the note. Um, fewer repeats.
pretty addictive. And uh, we can change sort of the distribution of the repeats uh, with the curve parameter. So if I just turn down, turn off the gated mode for a second, uh, a little easier to hear maybe. So if I um, turn this to a negative value, it will sort of start out um, with like denser um, repeats and then end on a slower sort of uh, movement. And vice versa on positive values. So that kind of almost more like a bounce. And if you sync this to or turn on gated mode, it'll kind of do like a up and down kind of motion. these sort of different parameters you can get a lot of interesting yeah so that's the impulse page and then we get go to green and this as I said is sort of a noise generator where you can adjust the density of the noise. And this means that the noise is sort of built up of these individual particles. And as you um, turn the density down, you start hearing each one, which is really nice for triggering the mold bank because you can get these kind of like little scraping or things like that. Um, so let's mix that in. Um, and this is usually quite grating when it's full white noise. Um, so let's look at the density parameter a little bit. So as you hear, when you turn that down, you start hearing these individual crackles. just really nice to play around with. Um, shape and tone is sort of the, the filter of the grain. So shape will essentially high pass or sort of control the bottom uh, end of the frequency range of the grain. Whereas tone will sort of reduce the top end. And essentially this is like almost like a variable bandpass filter where you have sort of the base frequency that you move up and down and then you have sort of the range of, of uh, the upper end of it. So you can essentially make it a very narrow band that you move around. And um, again, the decay not being a decay, if we turn that all the way down, we just almost only hear the noise generator itself, which is quite nice to make some crackles with. And um, the noise generator has an actual envelope, um, attack hold release. And as you can see, I, I turned the hold into a gated hold. Um, so by default, it's it's, just percussive. Um, but if you turn hold all the way up, you'll get this little note icon, which lets you sustain it as long as you hold down a key. And uh, yeah, attack, hold, release. So 
Simple as that. And uh, the next page is tonality. So again, this controls sort of the frequencies or rather the ratios of each partial. So by default, the partials, as I showed again in the max patch, um, if I set these to one, two, three, four, um, this is sort of the basis um, of what Tela does. So first you have this sort of uh, linear pattern, one, two, three, four, partial one is one, partial two is two and so on. Um, and this creates this sort of saw wave pattern. And once we start to change those ratio and frequency relationships, it starts to take on different shapes and, and textures and stuff like that. Um, so gap controls the equal distance of all partials. Um, and this is uh, something you can create more like symmetrical waveforms out of. Um, so essentially the relationship is sort of stable you could say um, and each tenth uh, tenth of the parameter is sort of an equal like a whole number distance so that's kind of where things that are enharmonic or in tune uh, sort of lies and if you increase the distance by one whole number which is 10 um, you essentially get a square wave. Um, which is really funny. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the different shape, the, and then it starts to become more like a bell-like. Bend um, sort of expands or contracts the whole modal bank. Um, and this lets you really experiment with inner in harmonicities uh, and sort of more strange sounds. So if I start bending, we'll start hearing the modal bank kind of get out of tune. Especially when you just tune it a little bit and you get these strange. And it can also go in negative values where you kind of contract the whole uh, modal bank. And this is, of course, where it's more useful for percussion and kind of metallic sounds and stuff like that. And warp changes the sort of trajectory of the bend. Um, so if I, again, kind of have a little less value towards the upper end, and I just kind of subtle bend -ish, I can kind of control how much of that is affecting sort of the upper end or the lower end. Um, So the less warp you have, the sort of more in tune the sound will feel a little bit because it's not as dramatic on the sort of principal frequencies. Um. But yeah, just a really cool effect. Speaking of being in tune, the next <laughs> parameter, tune, actually tunes each partial in the modal bank. So um, this could 
forces them into sort of a whole number value, which means that they are more or less in tune with the bass frequency of the sound. So if I turn this on this sound, which is very inharmonic, at the end here I get this weird kind of chirp waveform. And uh, of course, just having a little bit of tuning, uh, detuning, will have really nice effects, like strange little facing. And this is just really useful to keep your sound more in tune with other stuff for experimenting with these sort of different relationships. And uh, then offset um, sort of has a, this acts after tune. Um, so it's, it's sort of independent of that. And this takes every other partial, so the uh, odd partials, and uh, detunes them an octave up or down. And this is really nice to introduce sort of a secondary pattern uh, for some facing or detuning or even like a subharmonic. <laughs> If you turn that halfway, you'll get sort of a just intonation fifth. And this is especially nice when working with more enharmonic stuff, like if we turn down the bend. Get these sort of things and we add a little bit of offset. we get a much more sort of metallic um, inharmonic feeling. And lastly, damp. Uh, this parameter uh, controls the, the dampening factor of all the filters. So as we talked about with the Max Patch again, the, the demo here, um, the decay is not an actual decay. It's the resonance of the filters. And uh, this is tuned in a way where when you turn the decay control here, it sort of feels and acts more like if you're changing the, the amplitude decay, the decay envelope of the synthesizer voice. And what the damp does is that it um, kind of um, applies a natural uh, response to the filters. Um, so sort of higher frequencies will ring out faster and lower frequencies slower. And this sounds a lot more like how materials kind of resonate in the real world. Um, so when I turn this up, you'll notice that it starts becoming more like a plucky sound. And of course, ride this a little bit on the upper end you can sort of control the how many uh sort of how much high frequency energy you have in your sound sort of um So yeah, that is the tonality page.
Sorry, I have to go back to this song wave all the time. It's not as exciting, maybe. But it's a good demo tool. So on the contour page, uh, we control all the amplitudes in the whole bank. And um, this lets us kind of create sort of little patterns of amplitude stuff without affecting, affecting the frequency, which is really nice because it lets us do these kind of dramatic changes to the sound without really having that many implications on tuning and stuff like that. So first of all, we have a cut parameter and this sort of reduces the partials either from top or from the bottom. Um, and uh, sort of sounds like like I think I said before, it sounds kind of like a, almost like an infinite low pass filter that just brick wall cuts each partial. Um. Um, so on negative values, you sort of turn all the par partials uh, upwards down. And when we turn it uh, the other way around, negative positive values, we sort of reduce it from the uh, bottom up, which uh, gives a lot, more, a lot more high frequency content kind of in the sound or energy. Like a, essentially a really cursed high pass filter. And uh, tilt. Um, tilts the spectrum up, kind of. Um, so by default, the fall off, the sort of amplitude fall off of the of the partials follows sort of this natural um, pattern um, where of roll off, which which um, uh, gives it this sort of nice response to things and makes it make these uh, sort of uh, um, perfect waveforms a possibility. But we can instead make this entirely linear whereas it starts kind of giving more emphasis to higher frequencies. Um, so uh, sounding like more brighter, which is really useful to control the brightness of the patch, kind of. Simple. And uh, mix, mixes between the even and odd partials. Yeah, no, no big deal. And of course, you get a saw wave and a saw wave, an octave up and a square of a wave. Uh, if you haven't like messed around with any of those frequencies and stuff. Uh, but where it gets really interesting is this sine wave uh, pattern we can apply to the whole bank. Um, so. Um, this is sort of the, the frequency of the sine wave, how many sort of peaks and valleys we'll get. Um, and the depth controls the depth of that uh, pattern on the actual uh, uh, amplitude range. So if we listen to just kind of like a very narrow one. And this has sort of like a comb-like quality to it. Um, and you can push the depth um, really high um, so that it only gets like a few partials depending on the sine wave setting. phase parameter controls the sort of sine wave uh, phase, like where in its period it is. Um, and this kind of shifts it around, which is really nice to find different sort of like little dips and, and peaks that you can play around with. Um... 
Of course, can sound quite strange because you get different like overtones acting on as the sort of main part of the sound. So you get some strange transpositions and stuff when you have a lot of depth uh, applied to it. Um, yeah, and all of this goes into the space reverb effect. And uh, I'm just going to set up a little bit more fun sounds sound before trying that out. So um, the space is simply a reverb effect. It sounds smallish or really, really, really big. Um, and uh, it has sort of the controls you would expect from a reverb. Um, the mix control, so this is an insert effect. So um, the synth is always going into it. Um, so it's not like a send where you, as you turn down the mix or the send, you, you'll, you'll still hear the reverb, but this is more like a mix between the two sources which is cool because you can later modulate that. Um, so mix just controls the dry wet balance. Um, size controls the sort of size of the space, uh, simply. And uh, it has these wonky, cool sounds when you, when you switch it up. So it can sound quite small. Extremely big. And uh, the decay parameter kind of controls how long it rings out. So uh, turn it all the way down and have a very short size, small size. It's quite a short ish reverb. Um, but if we turn the size to um, the default position and kind of whack this into the maximum. We get a really long tail. And if we go into extremes, we get almost an infinite sustain. And uh, focus controls sort of the balance between, you can see early reflections and the late stage of the reverb where it starts to more turn into ambience. So as you hear, there's this initial hit and we can, by increasing this uh, positively, we can um, sort of mix that out. It's uh, more obvious with full mix. So when this is sort of at the midpoint, you sort of hear the initial hit and you get sort of this uh, quick wash and then you get this long sort of decay. So if you want to make something way more ambient, uh, you can mix in just the late signal. And uh, the other way around sort of changes the overall tone of the reverb, you can say, or the focus of, of the different um, uh, elements of play. So when you turn that the other way around, the first hit kind of becomes a little bit longer. Um, the 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 tail goes away, and this is sort of more reminiscent of of kind of older delays. So you'll hear sort of a shift in that. So there's like this energy buildup at the beginning, and then sort of a quick. Uh, uh, Ring out. Yeah. 
It's just a different flavor, kind of. Chorus controls the amount of modulation in the reverb, uh, meaning kind of it's like pitch variance over time. So if you turn this all the way down, we can have a bit more uh, brighter sound for this. You get a very sort of flat sounding reverb. Um, and when you turn chorus up, it starts to sound more lively. And at higher levels, it's of course more dramatic. And as you turn up size, it'll start to really act on everything a lot more. Um, and the last parameter is tone. And this is sort of like the tonality, the filter of the um, reverb. So you can make it sound brighter or darker. Um, That's basically all of the parameter pages. Uh, now it's time for the LFO. So as I said, every page has an LFO connected to it, kind of, or it has its own LFO that you can mess around with. So I'm just going to reset these um, to illustrate. Um, and... Oh. So, um, for example, I can, one parameter I think is really nice to modulate is the face. So if I press this button right here, um, these lines and the dot, I go into the LFO page. So the LFO is this very dynamic or sort of malleable LFO that we try to kind of condense it into as few parameters as possible, but having it as flexible as possible. So um, we have three main parameters, shape, twist, and bend, and these all uh, change the wave shape of the, of the LFO waveform. And here you can sort of build everything from sort of sine waves to uh, envelopes and sort of more spiky, weird um, sort of shapes. So when I turn shape, I mix between a sort of a ramp and uh, a sine wave. And uh, twist changes these in different ways. So when I'm in the sine wave mode, a positive twist will sort of make it spikier, and a negative twist will make it sort of fuller like a square wave. So um, you essentially have a square wave, a sine wave, and this sort of triangular-ish um, wave. And when you have the um, ramp mixed in, you sort of change the slope of the ramp, which lets you build either a saw wave or a triangular wave. Um, and lastly, bend um, sort of pushes the wave back and forth, um, changes its sort of face, um, which is useful for um, both having these sort of like little dips, um, sort of like, uh, um, but also, of course, with the, um, with the sort of square wave-ish, we can get a sort of a pulse width and uh, when I'm in the ramp mode and I've got it set up as more of a saw wave, I can I can change sort of the trajectory of the saw wave, which is really useful for envelopes. So let's stay with the saw wave because it has some nice usage with the face. Um, so uh, the rate simply controls the speed, and this can be synced to the BPM of the host and also the frequency of the note that's being played. Uh, right now it's it's free running. So um, jitter 
sort of uh, makes the LFO sort of randomly spin around a little bit. And at really high values, it starts to sound more random. Um, and depth just simply applies the depth of the LFO on the parameter. Um, and the uh, LFO output is bipolar, so it's always negative one to one or, or like the full range of the value. So for example, here with phase, um, it's minus 50 to 50. So I want, if I want the full range of this to sort of loop um, with LFO, I go to the depth and pull it to 50 because it's going to go minus 50 to 50 kind of. And all the parameters in Tela basically uh, of the synth engine can be modulated in audio rate. So that's a whole different level of, of sort of uh, sound manipulation you can get to as well. And this can have really dramatic effects on stuff uh, like, like the amplitudes and, and all the frequencies because you're essentially changing 128 uh, individual components at once, which is really interesting. So if we listen to the... Um, um, the jitter a little bit. It sort of goes f slow and fast and kind of jitters all over the place. Um, and uh, as I said, you can uh, sync this to uh, the BPM of the host, which is this note. So then we get these rhythms, um, just musical note values, simple as that. And when this is enabled, uh, the LFO will also reset every time you start the transport. So it's kind of always in time with the DAW. Um, and this mode, the sort of ratio mode, uh, let's you sync to the uh, frequency of the key being played. And as I said, this is like a really interesting way to introduce sort of a second layer of sound design. And you can get these pretty tight modulations. And to change the, um, the destination, you just press this button down here and it opens the destination menu and you can just change to whichever parameter. Maybe take it out of that mode. You can also change the way the LFO is sort of triggered or how it sort of steps through the cycle. So as you can see, there's this icon here with the sort of infinity symbol. So the LFO right now is free running, so it will never sort of reset. But if we wanted to reset every time we uh, press a note, for example, you can use this mode, the retrig re mode. So every time you press, it will sort of start over from the beginning and do the same sort of shape. I uh, can also listen to. Um, and uh, this mode is sample and hold. So the LFO is free running and every time you hit a key, it takes uh, sort of the value from the LFO and applies it 
uh, S modulation. <laughs> And uh, the, uh, this mode is similar to sample and hold, but it's called step, and it sort of divides the waveform into individual chunks that you step through um, every time you press a key. So it's sort of like sample and hold, but it's a repeating pattern. The last mode is one shot, and notice how the waveform changes because it actually only completes half a cycle. So you can apply modulation additively or like from, from a sort of a unipolar sense. And this is useful for more like envelope type stuff. Um, so, uh, so you get like a one shot. And again, if I change the bend, it'll sound more like a natural envelope. And this is, of course, super useful for pitch modulation. Um, and the last bit I haven't talked about is the phase. So this controls where the LFO sort of starts. Which uh, is maybe not the most obvious in this mode. <laughs> but um, if we listen to like the sine wave, for example... It will basically... It'll start at different points in the waveform. And this is just useful to get your modulation exactly where you want it. For example, when it's tempo synced or um, you're sort of using it as an envelope, you can really get exactly where you want it. And that's the LFO. Um, and uh, that's kind of the whole synth. And now we get to the more... Uh, a uh, little bit more boring stuff like uh, presets and uh, settings. Um, but the, the settings still pretty cool. So um, the interface, you can select any color you want for the background and foreground. Um, you can select by a few different themes or make your own and set it as a default. Um, if I press this flip button here, the interface will flip colors. And uh, I can change them to whatever I want. Um, maybe I like something like this. Kind of like a... Um, <laughs> just watch me make the most hideous. <laughs> um, and if I really like this color, I can press make default and this will be the color that loads up when you load a new instance of Tella. But when you change the interface color manually, um, it's actually per instance. You can have multiple telas, each with a different color if you want. And uh, this uh, picker down here lets you select from a couple of pre-made themes. Um, so if I press tela, for example, uh, it goes back to the default theme. So the way this works is you press left and right here and then um, the option to confirm. Uh, let's go with silver. It's really good. Um, scale does kind of what you'd expect. Um, you can put it to 100%. I got it at 150 because it's nicer for the video. You can go up to 200, which uh, is uh, probably too big for this video. Um, but yeah. Um, and uh, down here we have sort of management stuff. Like you see your email that you logged in with. Uh, and um, I should have really used my force email, but I forgot. Um, you see the version number and auto update. So Tela has automatic updates in the background. And this is on by default. It can be turned off if you want to, but we really strongly recommend having it on. It's a very non-invasive uh, auto update. Basically, when a new version is available, um, it downloads in the background and just uh, updates. 
And the next time you start your DAW, uh, it will have the new version and you'll see a little pop up. Um, and uh, of course the version number changes. And uh, yeah, just really nice. So that's Tela. Um, yeah, we had a blast making this. It's a very first native plugin. Um, we spent a long time on it. Uh, we built our own plugin framework from the ground up using really modern technology with let's us do all these cool and cute animations. Um, and uh, yeah, we're just really excited to share it. And uh, we're just looking forward to hearing all the sounds and cool stuff that people do with it. Uh, and of course, I forgot to talk about the preset menu. <laughs> so the so the preset menu um, is when you press this button up here, uh, it opens the preset menu. Um, here you can, uh, yeah, these are sort of uh, um, some random presets I, I got up here. Um, but you can uh, change the name of your sound. So the default is new sound. Um, so maybe I want to call it Shingling. Um, yeah, and then you can save it. It saves us as a new sound. Um, and uh, the force category is like our uh, factory uh, presets and the user is where you can save uh, your own. If you press this little eraser, you can uh, delete presets. Um, and uh, they are located in your user library. So if you open that up, you'll just get the sort of folder with all the all the data, which is this pretty readable JSON format, which is quite nice. Um, to load a preset, just click it. This button right here um, randomizes the patch. So every time you press that, you'll get a new sound. Um, sometimes. it makes nice sound sometimes it makes bad sounds <laughs> it's just the nature of random really we try to make it so that it does things that might be kind of unexpected to not skew it too much into a certain area of sound but more like have it sort of make things that a person might not make it's very being very musical today which is nice for the video But yeah, so that is actually Tela. <laughs> um, oh, and to, <laughs> to initialize your sound, you press new. We're back to square one. So that's Tela. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we really hope you enjoy it. Uh, shoot us an email if there's anything you're wondering about it, or if you made something cool with it, we're dying to hear.